This tutorial will walk you through the definition and components of academic scholarship, as well as the definition of plagiarism, examples of proper citation conventions, and UB's plagiarism policies. Click to continue. Academic writing is meant for a critical and informed audience. It's based on investigated knowledge and uses hypothesis, theory, or arguments to arrive at a conclusion. It is objective, explains why the research is important, and organized so that other scholars can try to reproduce the results. Academic writing utilizes formal language. Authors of academic writing include university professors or retired faculty. They can also be scientists or research teams. Academic scholarship is disseminated many ways. Books, journal articles, and dissertations are three common venues. Books and dissertations go through a lengthy review process, sometimes taking years before they are ready for publication. The author has had their work reviewed by peers, fellow professors or researchers, and copy editors for both content clarity and grammar. Due to their length, books and dissertations are organized into chapters. They usually end with a final concluding chapter. Journal articles are slightly different. They go through a much shorter review process anywhere from three months to one year. However, they are also reviewed by peers, scholars who are experts in the field of study, and journal editors. Because of their conciseness, they tend to follow a standard format. Journal articles in the social sciences typically include an abstract, introduction, literature review, hypothesis, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion, and bibliography or list of references. Let's take a closer look at each section. An abstract summarizes the important parts of the research. It gives the purposes of the research, the methodology used to collect data, and a brief conclusion. A literature review goes through earlier research that has already been done on the topic. It may also review research that has been done on tangential or similar topics that support or even refute the author's hypothesis. After the literature review, one usually finds a brief mention of the methodology to be used along with a detailed hypothesis for research. What is being measured and why? What is the expected outcome and how will data be gathered? The remainder of the article typically contains headings. The first is methodology. This is the method the researcher employed to test his or her hypothesis. Some common methods are coded analysis of interactions, survey, or experiment. After methodology comes the results. In this section you will find the author's data along with an interpretation of the findings. The discussion is next. Here the author will place his or her research within the larger body of knowledge on the topic. The author will also discuss the meaning behind the results in the previous section. The last piece of the article is the conclusion. Here the author summarizes the hypothesis as it pertains to the actual research results. The references or bibliography always appear at the end. It is a list alphabetical by author's last name of all the books, articles, dissertations, websites, etc. that were consulted and cited in writing the piece. View the following website. Is this academic scholarship? Click the link to open a new window. When you are done viewing, close it to return to the tutorial. Yes, this is an academic article hosted on a nonprofit organization's website. Permission to reprint the article online was given by the author. It contains an abstract, introduction, literature review, hypothesis, methodology, in this case a case study, discussion, and bibliography. What is plagiarism? Oxford English Dictionary defines plagiarism as the action or practice of taking someone else's work, idea, etc. and passing it off as one's own. Literary theft. Had I not told you where the definition came from, I would have been guilty of plagiarism. To avoid plagiarism in the body of your paper, provide proper citations for all quotations, summaries, paraphrases, or any other work or idea that is borrowed from others. Specific formatting styles are used depending on your discipline. The most common are MLA for Arts and Humanities 
and APA for social sciences. When using exact words, phrases, or sentences from a source, make sure to properly use quotation marks and cite where the information was taken from. How to avoid plagiarism in the body of your paper. Here is an example using APA style. This author has quoted Goebbels' 1995 article. Note the quotation marks. Here is another example using MLA style. This author has quoted a personal communication between himself or herself and another person. Note the quotation marks. Paraphrasing is when you take the ideas or phrases from a source and rewrite them using your own words. Summarizing is condensing a source into a few lines, focusing on the author's main points. In either example, credit is given to the original author or authors. Here is an example using MLA style. This author has paraphrased the fourth paragraph on page 45 of Riber's article. Here is another example using APA style. Here the author summarized the findings of three articles, each written by multiple authors, to come to this one point. Now let's pretend. You are a student writing a paper. You have gathered literature on your paper topic, Asperger's Syndrome. In the following questions, you will be asked to review parts of what you have read, look at what you have written, and determine if you are plagiarizing. In the book, The Complete Guide to Asperger's Syndrome by Tony Atwood, on page 56, you read, The phrase, two's company, three's a crowd, is very appropriate for someone with Asperger's Syndrome. In a group setting, the person's intellectual capacity may not be sufficient to cope with the social interaction of several participants, and the person may take longer to process social information that is normally communicated more quickly in a group than individually. If a one-to-one -one conversation is a game of tennis, a group interaction is a game of football. In your paper, you write, in a group setting, the person's intellectual capacity is such that a person with Asperger's syndrome does not have the intellectual capacity to cope with the social interaction of several participants. They may take longer to process social information. Is it plagiarism? Yes, it is plagiarism because you use too many of Tony Atwood's original words. Instead, paraphrase by saying, according to Atwood, the more participants in a social interaction, the more likelihood a breakdown in the transmission of social information will occur for a person with Asperger's Syndrome. On the internet you find Asperger's Syndrome fact sheet. Click the link to open a new window. When you are done viewing, close it to return to the tutorial. In your paper you write, according to the National Institutes of Health, Asperger's Syndrome is characterized by repetitive routines, peculiarities in speech and language, socially and emotionally inappropriate behavior, restricted use of gestures, and uncoordinated motor movements. Is it plagiarism? No. This is acceptable quoting. The name of the organization and the year accessed is included at the beginning of the sentence. It would also be included in the bibliography with the name of the page, date accessed, and URL. You digitize the following table from a book found at Google Books. During your in-class PowerPoint presentation, you include table 15.1 as it is. Is it plagiarism? Yes, this is plagiarism. Even though it is not being published, it is still being viewed by others. Therefore, the author needs to receive credit for his work, and you need to let the audience know that this is not your intellectual property by including a footnote below the table. You know it is a well-established fact that some famous people have suffered from Asperger's Syndrome. In your paper you write, Current Asperger's Syndrome research has discovered that adults with AS have a remarkable ability to become completely focused on one topic to the exclusion of all else. This ability to block out the mundane world has led psychologists to hypothesize that many artists and scientists have Asperger's Syndrome. It is a well-established fact that Andy Warhol and Albert Einstein were living with AS before it was known. Is it plagiarism? 
Yes, this is plagiarism. This well-established fact needs to be verified, the author or authors found, and a proper citation inserted. How to avoid plagiarism in your bibliography. In your paper, you will cite the books, articles, dissertations, videos, etc. that you used either as footnotes at the bottom of each page or as a bibliography at the end. The choice will be made either by your instructor or by the citation style you use. The University Libraries has an excellent guide to the most popular citation styles here at the link Citing Sources. Click through the next three slides to familiarize yourself with both APA and MLA citation styles for websites, books, and journal articles. The following is UB's policy on plagiarism and academic integrity. If in doubt, the student should always err on the side of caution and consult the instructor for additional guidance. UB enforces its plagiarism policy through the use of the software SafeAssign. Thank you for taking this self-assessed tutorial. For more help and information, please go to the University of Buffalo Library's Research Tips website.